Hello friends and farmers, and welcome to this Sunhaven Beginner's Guide to help you get started in your adventure through Sunhaven's Early Access release. I'll be overviewing core gameplay elements today such as farming, uh, mining, fishing, romance, and combat, and just about any other tips that I can probably think of along the way. Um, we're going to go ahead and start with character customization today and get this show on the road. Okay, so first off, you're going to go to single player and make a new character, or you can make one and host and play as well. If you're joining a friend's game, you can make a new character when you try to join them. So we are currently given six races, the humans, elves, demons, angels, Amari, and elements. Um, they all have their own unique character customization options. So let's go ahead and get started with the humans. Don't forget that there are these sliders down here or, or these skin tones rather, because when I first made my character, I simply didn't see it and it was sad. Um, humans have just the basic options, uh, beards, they have way more beards than the other races do, um, as you see, and you can change the way you look with these current options. We don't have access to these because these are for demons and angels. So elves, they get wings, very pretty wings. My personal favorite is this far right one and you go black and at night it's like little stars on your back. It's very pretty. Um, demons. Like I said, guys, I will be doing a in-depth tutorial and guide on a lot of these topics. So today, we're just going to be doing some overviews, all right? Now, demons have way more options than the other races do currently. Um, angels also have some cute options, primarily the wings. That's all what we're that's what we're here for. Let's face it, guys, we're here for the wings. Um, they have some beards, very pretty. The Amaris are currently how you can become a griffin, a little cat girl. Um, I don't know what this is, an alligator or something, a tiger, I don't know. Um, but you can make yourself look very cool and have interesting features that other classes simply do not have access to. And lastly is the element. Right now, they're going to be implementing new colors for the elements. There are not a lot of options available for them right now, um, but there are some coming soon. So let's go ahead and jump into the next section, which is going to be farming. So we're going to start by doing the very first quest in the settling in. They will give you some tools and you're gonna get your hoe and you hoe with left click. Now, something important to know about tools is there are no durability. So you don't need to be afraid of messing up or anything like that and having to remake your tools as they do not currently have any durability. With hoeing an item, let's say you hoe over here and you're like, well, that doesn't look very good. Make sure that you know that you can right click it to undo it. Very simple. So we've hoed our land and you want to click. Now you can click every single thing, but that goes very slow when you have a big farm. So if you click and drag, it's that easy as well. Now you can get your watering can out. Of course you water it, very simple. And this is the basics of farming. It, every seed, if you hover over it, says it takes a certain amount of days to grow. Um, for instance, these both take three days to grow. And farming is a very fun aspect of this game. And like I said before, I will be going into an in-depth guide on farming and how you can make it better and have a, a just a better time farming. Um, something to note is that your watering cans as they improve, we'll have more uses and they will go faster. So you don't have to like uh, water so slowly. Um, and you just click the water and it refills, there you go. Okay everyone, I just came over to this world to show you what extra nice tools look like. As you can see, it's much faster if you have, these are currently mithril tools this way. However, as your XP grows and you get farming level, you will get access to Groundbreaker which will hoe nearby land as a spell, and rainy day, which will water nearby land with a spell. So if I wanted this to be a farm over here, I could just simply use Groundbreaker, and boom, I have a very nice, pretty big farm, which is not even, and that is gonna bother me. And something to note about the raining spell, which I currently have bound to my R, and Earthquake is here. Is, it, is wherever your mouse is facing. So my character's facing down, but if my mouse is up, it goes that way, it's to the right, it goes right, and so on and so forth. And lastly, you do not get experience currently 
uh, for watering plants with the cloud um, as you normally do with a watering can. So if I were to water crops right here, I would not get XP using the cloud. Okay, let's go ahead and jump into mining. Okay, time to mine. So I'm gonna grab my pickaxe, which I apparently already do have right here, my mythical pickaxe. And I would show you this on my little dude, but I wanna get there fast. So to get to the mining location, you have to go to where the blacksmith lives. And he lives way over here on the map. It is, oh, this is kind of hard to read, isn't it? You go up, cross, uh, no, right here. This little area right here. So just across. Um, something to note, a little pro tip is the more mana you get, dash consumes two mana, and you can just dash everywhere you go, on or off the mount. The blacksmith lives inside of there. This is how you get to your mine. You enter it, select the floor, and you're good to go. Now, the way mining currently works is you have a couple of ways to progress deeper into the mine. You can unlock it with a rusty key or a copper key. Now, copper keys, they come from copper ore, which you will find in the mine randomly throughout. Um, and you can see these are just normal ores. These are um, a mix between just regular stone and occasionally you'll get coal from here. Um, this is your copper. So go around, find your copper, and you can see I just got a rusty key. I can continue to mine which I will, because I want the copper. Or, I can go deeper into the into the mine. This smooth stone right there usually has coal, which it does. And you can mine these little vases, and the vases can drop the copper key as well. Or, that's rather, uh, sorry, the rusty key. So let's go ahead and go a little bit deeper, and then I will show you what that's like. You go up to the gate, rusty key, it's open, get back in your cart, select two, and on you go. I will be returning back to the cave in a moment to show you how copper keys work once I smelt this copper. Okay, so we're back home now, and I have the copper ores that I went and I mined from the floor one and two and three, and you're going to want to make a furnace. So you're not going to have a furnace right off the bat, so what you need to do is you need to come to your crafting table, use six of those ore and six wooden planks to make yourself a furnace. And once you have a furnace, you will go over here, place it, and smelt all of your copper. Um, each copper takes, uh, I don't know, like an in-game hour? I don't know if it tells me. It takes a while. But here's the pro tip, is once you've got stuff cooking, just go into your house, go to sleep, and the time will pass and everything will be done for you in the morning. I had a lot of stuff to sell, that's why I got the money. I'll show you how to make money later, I promise. There we go, get your ores. Make yourself an anvil. Sing a little bit to the music, because it sounds great. Pick up your anvil, put it on your bars, place the anvil, and now this is how you're going to improve your weapons and your and your armor. Armor does give attack damage, by the way, so if you're struggling with combat, go, go mine a little bit, put some armor on, and then go kill. We're going to make some keys. So make at maximum five keys. The reason is because when you're mining, you get to a point where you're going to need iron keys, which you'll do the same process with. Get iron, turn them into bars, make your keys, and go forward. Now, what these copper keys and iron keys do is they make it to where your mine will stay open. Those floors will be unlocked forever. Um, and let me go show you that right now. All right, so we're back at the mine. We want to enter. But you see, all of the floors that I were at yesterday are still gray. You have to start at one again. This will continue to happen until you have your copper keys and your other keys inside of these doors. Once you feel like you've gotten to the point where you're ready, unlock it using your copper key. Now, it's permanently unlocked. You can still go through and, and mine on whatever floor you'd like, but when you're ready, just start mining from the deeper floors, grab your keys, unlock them for good, and you're good to go. 
Now that we're done mining, let's go do some combat. I'll show you a little bit more about that. So, if you're wanting to start off combat and you don't know where, I highly recommend going to the beach where it's level 3 enemies, they're a lot easier to kill, and hopefully now you've got some armor and weapons from mining where they'll be a little bit easier for you to take care of. Another good thing to note is they're great for getting seeds. So I'm going to clear out these two slots over here. And as you see, I'm going to get a bunch of seeds from Kilo. Now they have some pretty big ranges in which they'll aggro to you. Aggro meaning just come attack you. Um, and you can use a, a crossbow from range to kill them. Or you can use your sword and cleave them. I like my sword, but then again I am a higher level with some better armor. So it ends up working out. So after killing them, I got one seed, but I want to show you a little bit about how combat works. As you level your combat skill up, you'll have the option to increase your magic, your, your health, and all these things, and I'll go in depth with all of these in a combat video, I promise. But I just want to show you this area to make sure that you know that early on, this is the best place to farm your combat skill, maybe up to maybe seven, eight-ish. Um, and the reason why I recommend doing this, just for an entire in-game day maybe, is because you can get some awesome seeds from them. Now they have a pretty short respawn window, so if you are in farming mode and really trying to make money fast, this is a good way to do it early on because you will get a bunch of seeds um, and these score peppers will occasionally drop pepper seeds which are very expensive. Um, and it's just a great way to farm. So enjoy yourself down here for a little bit. Um, f mining, or not mining. Combat is very fun. Uh, the sword is super sweet. Mine hits like a truck right now. Uh, the crossbow is also pretty fun. And you can get magic. And if you want to assign your magic, check over here to equip them. And then you just shoot it. Start with our fire beam. Let's get the, let's get all these boys in a line, and uh, maybe we'll do chain lightning since we're together. Boom, chain lightning. Now I'll show you fire beam, and combat is just a fun little little side thing that they did a great job implementing in the game, and I really enjoy it. Next is fire beam, and then after this, how about I show you fishing? Very simple, quick one. Oh, well that didn't go where I wanted it. I don't think fire beam can go at diagonal angles, so make sure if you're shooting it that you've got them in uh, straight lines. And after just a couple minutes, I've got nine seeds of green roots, which also sell for a good amount, and one pepper seed. Pepper ones are a little more expensive, so they're a little more rare. So now that we're done killing all those baddies down there, let's go ahead and plant these seeds in our garden, and then we'll start fishing. Fishing is... It's a decent way to get XP right now um, for exploration, but I really do it for some of the romance options as my current favorite girlfriend likes sea bass. Cool. So this is all fishable water, but currently there are no fish in it. And the reason I know that is because I am looking for that little guy down there, as you saw. I need to clean out this mess. I'll do this later. That little fishy. You're looking for him. So, once you find little fishies, you have the option to throw your your little bar as far as it goes. It doesn't mean that it's going to be high quality or low quality. It's just the distance that it travels. And once you release it, the fish will come to it and either nibble or bite. That was a full bite because it went all the way down and all the way back up. And I will show you the difference between nibbles and bites in just a moment. There's another fishy. So you're gonna click as soon as you see him bite. That was a nibble, that's a bite. And you can tell because it also has a sound cue and it's that easy. There are 44 fish so far in the game and it's random which ones you'll get. Um, and once you get them, it is just sell them or use them for quests. Currently there's not a whole big use for fish in the game um but it's a pretty fun and easy way to get some exploration xp oops and to you can make some dishes with fish and trade them to people like kitty who is my personal favorite which we're gonna go talk to 
right now and discuss romance. So, let's go to Kitty. Um, what the heck? You're in my way. Well, I forgot I made a new world. And he needs five wheat and ten apples. Um, we're gonna go a different way because I don't have that on me right now. And I'll, I'll catch up with you in just a moment. Alright, so let's talk about romance for a minute here. This game has so many NPCs that you can talk to for romance. I mean, so many. And you can currently, in the early access state, date as many as you want. There is no jealousy issue. There's nothing along, th along those lines. Uh, the only thing is right now, in the current state, marriage is not an option. You can buy a wedding ring, but you cannot get married. So, just get your lovers lovin', which I have not been doing much of, except for Kitty. Um, and they will actually give you rewards. So, you see here, there's a faded little icon, and that is what they will give you. And that looks like a record um, for record players. This is a keepsake so on and so forth and if you want to know more about what they give you check out the wiki page as I'm sure there's plenty of information on it so if you want to do some romance you can talk to the person and you can give them a gift I know that kitty likes sea bass which I did not catch I don't know if she's gonna like bluegill we're about to find out oh she loves that so sea bass get four hearts but she just gave me five so I'm gonna start using bluegill um as you can see, I've got a lot of hearts. I've seen people with five rows of hearts. Um, right now, like I said, you can't get married. You can only do so much. Um, but romance is pretty much give gifts, go on dates, and I will go way more in depth in the romance video ahead. This is just a brief overview of how it works. Um, and to really enjoy yourself while you're here. Date the people, you know? You don't just have to hoe the ground. Well... That about sums up some of the starter information um, about combat and mining and things along those lines. I really just want you to enjoy yourself while you're here. Explore the world and things like that, but I'm going to leave you with just a couple of tips to get you started. In the town, you have this water fountain. Touch it. You'll see my mana go up. Five. You can do this every day, I believe. It's either every day or every other day. And I highly recommend doing it. If you want to make some good gold and some XP, check out your message board daily as you'll get new quests, and they'll show up here on the side. If you don't want to do the quest, or if it's bugged, then you can come here, hit the X, and get rid of it. Shops close at 8 o'clock, so make sure you get in at the last moment to get some stuff. And also, this stuff here, like this long black rug, only lasts for that day. So make sure you buy it if you want it, because it might not cycle back through. For a while. Well, that's all I've got for you today. Thank you everyone for joining me for this brief little overview. Um, like I said, this is just the start of a long series. I just wanted to give a little overview of certain aspects of the game, and eventually there will be videos that cover each thing in depth for those of you who are wanting to get intermediate to advanced tips. Um, for now, I really just can't stress enough to just enjoy your game. Have fun doing it. Take your time. Don't worry what everyone else is doing. Um, and I will welcome you to join me in the next video for additional tips and in-depth guides. Happy farming!